So Jerry and I are going to do a thing. For those of you that don't know, this is Jerry Ostrowski. Uh, Jerry, do you want to give your own intro or should I? No, you can give my intro, man. Okay, so Jerry played 10 years in the NFL. Um, he's really into Buffalo. He's really into Philly. He kind of sort of cares about TU just a little <laughs> bit. Um, and we talk almost every day. And one of the reasons that I wanted to build out this studio was to have him come through and be able to do his thing when he damn well pleases. And today, he damn well pleased. So, Jerry, thanks for coming in. No problem, man. This is awesome. Good Thank stuff. You. Thank you. My mom has been first, and I think that's as we... I think Next Step's background music while you talk. Why do you want background music? I don't know, man. People it's... hate background music. Do they really? Like, it just depends. Like, this audience skews toward your age, okay. and y'all don't like background music as a rule. Really? Yeah, I tried it a Did couple times. you ever times. listen to a guy named Scott Farrell? Mm-hmm. I'm a big Farrell fan. Love Farrell. Yeah, and you... Farrell's got, like... Full blown Metallica and everything else in the background. Can you imagine me yelling over Metallica? Yeah, a little master of puppets. Sounds good. <laughs> nah, man, this is awesome, dude. This is great. I think I had like a Nothing Else Matters uh, like reference a couple days ago on the monologue or whatever. You did. Okay. All right. I didn't make that up. Good. It's six. For me, and, it was it was specifically for me and, and my friend Bill. I was. I was. We'll leave it at that. I was. Yeah. Because it was that, and I think I made an Inter Sandman reference at the end of that, too. Yes, you did. Okay, okay. Then I'm two for two. All right, so I want to talk about, just to start, right? Well, the Super Bowl, as it relates to high school football, because that's where I live and breathe. But one of the things I've been wild interested in is where does all the NFL talent come from, right? So I talk with uh, Zach Poff, who is the Max Preps football editor. Right. So he goes to a bunch of, not just high school football games, but the biggest high school football games. And he gets to know places like Modern Day and St. John Bosco. And we're chopping it up. And 226 of the 1,696 players in the NFL today are from the state of Florida. 27 are from Miami. Like, just <laughs> Miami. Right. I'm, I'm floored by this. And then you start doing some moving and shaking around. You find out. 177 are from California, 175 from Texas. Think about this. You said 27 are from Miami. Yeah. 22 are from the entire state of Oklahoma. But that's a good thing. Yes. Like, that's not a bad thing. Like, right. per capita, that's destroying. Right. Per capita, it's awesome. Yeah. And, and I was going to, I was bringing that up to the, to what you've talked about recently on some things to where, you know, it caused some, some hard feelings. Okay. So I usually am talking to the lens, right? Mm hmm thinking about how people are going to take what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're in the room now so you can combat this. Right. I tend, I believe that college football is a colloquial sport by and large. Right. And parochial to us. Mm -hmm. Like we care regionally about our teams. Right. And because we grow up, our parents' kids, we care more about the teams that are within pro close right. proximity to us. So we play a little bit more, we play tougher for them. Right. Now you got to recruit Florida. You gotta recruit Texas, you gotta recruit California, you gotta recruit Georgia. Have to. But am I wrong to think that you should be just surrounding yourself with the talent that you helped grow? Mm-hmm. I think that's for for sure the way it needs to be. I mean, you look at you look at kids in state, mm -hmm. and I've always felt this way, and because I was one of them. I was a kid that wanted to go to Penn State, didn't get an offer to go to Penn State, had an offer to be a walk on, preferred walk on. They had the back then they kind of had this deal called their they called it their their preferred 10 or something like that. They kind of made a deal out of kind of like 12th man. Everybody has something. Um, it didn't work out that way. I ended up going to Tulsa. Always wanted to go to Penn State. And at that time, Penn State had a wall around the state. Nobody got out. Very few got out. They let one go every now and then to Notre Dame. Maybe one got to Ohio State. But So, please, a new audience, because I know that many people know you from the sports right. animal and from the buzz, right? But exactly. But fill out, folks. What's the time period you were being recruited in? Okay. What was Penn State football then? Please. Right. 1988 was my senior year. Okay. Um, Penn State had come through and won the national championship for the first time, I believe, in 83? Okay. 83 or 85 when they beat Miami? Not 85. When was it? 85 was Oklahoma. That's that was 85. 85 was Oklahoma. <laughs> I think it was – I'm trying – when they beat when they beat Miami for the first time is when I think they won I'm, – I'm trying to remember. It was have to be – 83, 84 then. Yeah, it was 83. If it was the whole Jimmy Johnson, the fatigues game, the oh, whole nine yards. No, that was after then. That was like 86, 87 yeah, in there. Yeah, it was yeah. 86, 87. You're right. I read a book about it called a, 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 a Lion in Autumn, about that whole season and that whole 
how everything worked up to it and how just pissed Jimmy Johnson was of I the preferential been. treatment that Joe Paterno was getting at the Orange Bowl, all the way down to the furniture in the locker rooms. Him just going over and storming into the into the offices of the Orange Bowl, just demanding that he get the same stuff that they got over there, you know, like because Penn State's in the Miami Dolphins locker room, Miami's in the visitors locker room, okay. you know, all this kind of stuff. So, um, but no, I was in '88. There was no social media, there was no huddle videos. Coaches physically got in their cars, went on the road, and found kids. And a lot of times back then, what you're doing now. Mm-hmm. You weren't on the internet. You weren't making publications. They still had guys like you, but you were kind of the dudes that you knew about, Mm. maybe got helped financially, but nobody nobody really knew who these dudes were. They would call up and say, hey, who do you got in the area? Here's my list. I've seen these guys play. You want to look at this dude. You need a lineman? Go to Coatesville. They got a lineman. Do you need a do you need a DB? Go to Downingtown. They've got this DB. This is the dude you need to see. By the way, his pop works over here. You know, there's been recruiting, like, for instance, I know in Pittsburgh when you when they were running the steel mills, mm-hmm. three shifts a day, a college coach would meet a father or a dad outside the steel mill at 7 o'clock in the morning. He's coming off his third shift. First shift's going in. He's coming off third shift. Hey, coach, how you doing? They walk across the street to Bud's Bar. And they have their first shot in a beer at 7.05 in the morning. <laughs> okay? <laughs> out in Pittsburgh, out in Alquippa and Ambridge and all those areas. That's just how it was. It was much more of a, you know, it's funny. Recruiting is still personal. Mm-hmm. It's still about building relationships. Mm-hmm. But it was even more so back then. And I think it's why guys like Switzer just thrived. Because Switzer had friends. Mm. And friends would protect him and protect players for him and there was a lot more maneuvering going on back then like the stories you hear about i sat in the cafeteria all day long or i sat over in the diner across the street and what those were true (laughs) but that's how you recruited but it still had guys like you know dudes that were talent evaluators guys that you know they didn't have star ratings but they knew who could play and couldn't play and they would let guys know so how do you figure into this engine that is all newsletters and, and phone lines? Now? No, no. Back then when you are a player. Back then when I played, it was funny. I got a good story about that. Um, obviously, I was lightly recruited. I wasn't super heavily recruited. Went to Penn State on a non-official. They ended up inviting me to be a walk-on. Went to Pitt. Took a visit to Pitt. Um, Could have gone there. If you grew up your whole life wearing crimson and cream, and then the coach said rolled in and said, you can go to Oklahoma State. <laughs> that was probably a, you know. It's a fair cop. That's a, that's a big-time offense. Okay. And, and, you know, so that wasn't going to happen. Uh, Temple, I was offered a scholarship by this little-known coach at Temple by the name of Bruce Arians. His hey! Second, it was like his second year as a head coach. What? Just just straight. What? Ar- you think Arians just started this whole Kangol thing and, and, and walking like a pimp? Hey, He's been a pimp since day one. Because back in the day, he had the kind of the, he had the the premature and kind of the skullet working back then, the long hair, you know, which should kind of look like Hulgerson. But he wore a long leather trench, black leather trench on the sidelines. Dude, dude's the ultimate chameleon because he fit into Philly like nobody's business. But they offered me a scholarship. I didn't like to, I didn't like Temple. Same with Rutgers. Didn't like Rutgers. Rutgers is even worse off than it is now. Mm. That's hard. So, to, well, no, it's not because I, I count how many bowl games they've been to, and I'm like, okay, no, it's not. If you follow football in the NFL, the the PIAA, the the inter the intercollegiate league in Pennsylvania is really really good. Westchester, Kutztown, some some kid from Kutztown named I think his name's Andre Reed. He he used to play option quarterback at Kutztown from Allentown, Dorif High School. Uh, he ended up having a pretty decent career not at bad. Buffalo. Not, not, not bad. bad, not bad. Westchester had multiple players. I mean, there's players all across the board that have played at, at, at the, in the school systems in, in PA. Um, I had offers there, Westchester and all that. Westchester's right by the house. And basically they were like, look, if you go somewhere and don't like it, you've always got a spot. Okay. So basically it came down. I'm in, my, I'm in my living room, 
I'm talking to my parents and um, I'm not 18 yet. I'm still 17. Have never been on an airplane my entire life. And my father and I, I'm like, look, I'm getting recruited by this, by Tulsa, the school in Oklahoma. I said, we're going to get on a plane. We're going to go out there and take a visit. If I like it, that's where I'll go. If I don't like it, I'm going to Delaware. I'm going to be a fighting blue hen and play one double A football. Hmm. And my father and I got on that plane. We flew to Tulsa and I loved it. And, uh, I got out here two weeks after I was 18, two weeks and, Ain't been back since. I was gonna say this. This has been home for you. Even when, when you <laughs> yeah. got drafted into the NFL, you still managed to find your way back here. Yeah, I had a once. We, once I was allowed to kind of live in both places after I've established myself, I had a house down here. So as soon as the season was over, I would come down here, and I'd commute back and forth through the off season. 